So if you've been doing web dev or any other kind of dev for that matter for a while, sooner or later you will need something called a pop-up dialog or a modal dialog, right? So for example, take this website. There's this button that invites you to be bitten and so it's a dangerous thing. It could be basically a deletion of the file or something like that. This is just an example. And if you click it, you don't want to do the action immediately. Instead, you want to have a pop-up menu or a pop-up dialog box or a modal dialog box as it's called. So you'll notice that what it does is it prevents uh, the user from clicking anywhere else on the screen. Uh, you can still see the interface, but it's dimmed out. And until you select one of these options, the user cannot go forward. So if I not go yes, you have been bitten. But if I go no, then it doesn't do that. Right, so that's called a modal. And in this video, we're gonna build a modal dialog, this particular modal dialog with the uh, React and with the Tailwind. So this is not a React tutorial per se, or a Tailwind tutorial. So I'm assuming that you already have some familiarity with uh, creating a React app and uh, using the create React app, uh, you know, npx command and with Tailwind. Uh, if you've never used them together, however, you can go to this uh, URL over here, uh, basically, and I'll leave the link. And uh, this tells you exactly how to put Tailwind into your React uh, JS uh, application. So I'm gonna start off with the point where I've already done this and take it from there. So let's start with the simplest possible uh, React.js app, uh, app file. Uh, this is the basic app file. When you first do the create React app, it has some boilerplate code, which I've removed. And I've just replaced it with the simplest possible stateless component, right? So it's really nothing in here. It's just uh, the app component and it returns a div, which basically says, bite me at this point. And then you get, so this is the standard uh, React component. And at this point, uh, obviously it's not very really pretty. It just says bite me over here. So now if you have applied some uh, standard Tailwind classes to this thing, it still says bite me over here. But now you have these couple of divs which encapsulate it. This div is basically just a container. And uh, so just so I can get this justify center in there. And the second one is, uh, and this is a flex container, of course. The second one basically gives you the cursor pointer, which gives you the, 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 the hand uh, pointer. It has, again has the justify center, so the text within this is justified. The width is one third uh, of the screen. The background is blue 400. There's a padding of four. There's a margin of six. And it is rounded as a medium radius. And again, this is all standard tailwind stuff. And the text, of course, is white. So by doing this, it now looks like this and you get the hand pointer, but of course, if you click it, nothing happens yet. So we'll fix that next. So at this point, let me introduce you to the modal dialog or the modal component in React, which is what we're here for. Now, there's a lot going on in here, and so let's just take it step by step, right? So first, I'm gonna focus on the rendering part, which is the return statement. And within this, these are the Tailwind classes that actually make the, uh, make the modal look like the way we want it to be. Now, before we go on, I've already imported this component into our basic app component. So import modal from modal right here. And I've added it without any conditions for now over here, down here, which means that it is always rendered. And so at this point, because of this couple of statements and because of this uh, component, if I now go to the page, uh, the are you sure dialog is always there. It's not gonna go away because I haven't added that parts yet, but just to show what it looks like, right? So this is kind of where we are. Now with that, let's look at the rendering. Now here's the, the main trick to the modal in Tailwind classes, right? So this outer div has a background of Zinc 200. It has an opacity of 80. It is fixed, and that's the important part, with inset of zero. Inset of zero means that the margin are all sides are zero. So because it's fixed, and because it has inset zero, and therefore it's gonna span the entire screen. And uh, opacity 80 will make sure that anything behind that, you know, this button over here is still visible through it. And the zinc is just a choice. I mean, you can make it, uh, you know, let's just show you. You can make it green if you want. Um, that's up to you. So now the whole thing is green. And again, opacity, I'll just demonstrate. If I make it 50%, uh, then, you know, the background is more visible, but of course it's confusing. So we'll leave it at 80%. And personally, I do like zinc, so I'm gonna go back to that. So this is the main container class, which makes, uh, you know, make sure that the model looks basically and comes on top of everything else. And finally, you will notice the Z50. This is the Z order, the Z index, and it shows the vertic uh, the ordering of the components on the screen if they are overlapping. And by giving it a very high Z index, you're just ensuring that if there's any other component, this will be always on top, right? Um, this could actually be, at this point, 10 also, but I just make it 50, it'll still work, because nothing else has a Z index larger than 10. 
But for safety, you know, generally I leave it at 15 in case I later on add some components within their own Z indexes and just make sure that this is behind. So this is the main trick to getting the model in and displaying it the way it is. After that, there is this container class over here. Again, it is a uh, flex. It's gonna contain everything else. Uh, it has the height of the entire screen and, and justify center and item center. And within that, we now get to the actual class where it has the, uh, the blue color. So, you know, the blue border rather over here. So now we're talking about this particular container over here, this particular div. And again, it's a flex call. Uh, it's a flex box in a column ordering because everything else within this, which is the statement, and these two buttons, which are side by side, but these two things have to be one on top of another. So I'm using a flex call column for that. Justify center, background white, um, padding Y, direction 12, X direction 24. Again, these are sort of things that you can tweak. Um, border is width is four, border is uh, blue, and it is rounded, extra large rounding. So because of that, you get this nice blue border around it, the white background, and uh, you're ready to put these two things in it. The first thing you put, <clears throat> sorry, the first thing you put in it is the RU swirl statement. This is very standard stuff at this point, so I don't need to explain it too much. By the way, I leave all the code on GitHub and I will have the link in the description so you can, you know, don't worry about sort of copy pasting any of this code. It will be available on my uh, GitHub uh, account and the link will be there. Uh, within that, I have another flex box because now I need these buttons side by side. And so um, because of this flex, they will be side by side now. And these are a couple of buttons. The on click functions will take you to the handle OK click and the handle cancel click. These are the two functions up there. We'll get to those in a minute. Uh, but for now, let's focus on the rendering part. So they're rounded, uh, you know, the, the padding is there in the X and Y direction, text is white, one is green, the other is blue, one says yes and one says no. And so this is basically our modal function and it makes everything looks like this. Okay, so now we are ready to add interactivity to the uh, to the modal dialog, so it only shows up when we click the button, and not always, right? To do that, we have made a bunch of changes to this file, the app.js file, and we're gonna go over these one by one. First of all, uh, now importing the use state hook from React, fairly standard stuff, and uh, then we're using this use state hook in a couple of variables. One, we're using right now, so let's just talk about that. This is called modal on and its initial value is false. Of course, it comes with the set function as the uh, useState variables always do. It starts off at false, and this is the key. When it turns true, we want to display the model and vice versa. Uh, then there's a new onClick event, and uh, when this event happens, basically, it turns the set model to true. Um, and this click function is called from over here. This is our button. Remember the blue button that said bite me? It still says bite me over here. It's this exact same button. The only change is that I've added this on click function. So this on click is gonna call the click function, which is up here, and that's gonna change the set model to true, which is up here, all right? Um, so far, so good. And the final change is that previously we had just embedded this modal function directly as a single statement. I'm gonna get rid of that actually now. And now it is conditional. So this is the standard React trick. If you don't know it, I'll explain this because this is very, very handy. So basically what we're saying is modal on. Modal on, of course, is the state variable over here. Modal on and, logical and, and then the div, which actually contains the modal statement. We are also passing the modal a couple of values. Set modal on, which is our state variable from here. And a set choice, which I'll explain later. Now, what this and statement does is, if modal on is false, then this entire statement is not rendered. But when it is true, then the whole thing is rendered, right? So if this becomes false, then nothing happens. This entire statement gets ignored. So this is a fairly standard React way of showing things conditionally. And because we are passing on the set model on property into the model dialog, what will happen is that when we go into model, it will accept that set model on over here. And then when we click one of the buttons, either the yes button or the no button, they have their own click handlers. Uh, OK click and cancel click. And in each case, it will set the set model on to false, right? So both here as well as here. So whether the user selects yes or no, we want to close the model in both cases. So let's just go over this again because this is important. The model on is being switched on over here, right? Set model true is happening in the app file. And this is happening when we click on the button. Then we pass this function to our model over here and we say, you know what, I'm gonna switch it on, but you have the responsibility to switch it off. The modal uh, component then takes this over here, and now it has access to it, and one, once you click one of its buttons, 
then it sets it back to false. And so that's what closes this thing off and we are back to the button display, right? So let's just look at it again, right? So over here, we are in the app file, we click it and it turns the model on. Now we're in the modal component and as soon as I click one of these buttons, it uses the same function which was passed into it to turn it off and it disappears, right? So that's pretty neat. And now right now it doesn't actually says you are bitten and that's the last bit that we're just gonna add right now, but that's just the finishing touch. Basically the modal. So now for the finishing touch, um, we are just gonna add this bit of code over here, which is new. Everything else is the same from the last step. And what this does is, it will make sure that when we actually say, bite me, yes, it actually says that you have been bitten. And if you say no, it hides it away. And we're doing it in a very similar way. First of all, we have another bit of uh, state over here, which is the uh, choice. And of course it comes with set choice, initially it's false. And again, we're using the same uh, logical and trick. So we have the curly braces over here within our rendering code. Uh, and uh, we have an and with choice. So if choice is false, none of this is gonna get rendered and all of this will be invisible, which is how we start off because choice is false to begin with. But when it becomes true, then it displays this bit of code. Again, this basically, you know, it says you have been bitten over here and the rest is just standard uh, tailwind uh, classes. I'm not gonna go over these, but basically it displays that uh, red box over there. Uh, the tricky bit of course is how do you turn uh, this choice to true or to false? Because this choice is gonna happen uh, not on this particular component, but in the modal component. And so same trick as before, we have the set choice function, we pass it to the modal uh, component, right? So the modal component is being passed, not just a set model on, but also the set choice function. And so the model gets it over here, as you can see, set choice. And uh, basically, if you click the OK one, then it goes to the OK click handler, which sets the set choice to true. And if you click um, the cancel one, then it comes here and it sets the set choice to false. And because it has access to the same function passed by it from the app, it has the effect of either closing or opening the, uh, sorry, setting it sorry to true or false and therefore either displaying or not displaying the you have been written command, right? So now you have a complete model. You have a situation where it is not visible by default. It becomes visible and then based upon it, the result of it, you do something in your main file back again. So again, this is a trivial example, but of course, you can imagine how useful this is, right? So you will be using it in basically, for example, if you have a bunch of files and you know, user can click on a delete function, then you don't wanna do that just without any warning. And so you will say, are you sure or not? Or it could be some kind of a thing that has no undo, there are lots of possibilities. But basically, this is how you do a modal or a pop-up function in Tailwind React. I hope uh, you found this useful and uh, See you guys later.